In my last video about Iran selling drones to Russia, I talked about how that's going to be part of the prophecy of the Gog Magog war and that the drones will cover the land like a cloud as well as the soldiers on the ground. But this was kind of a revelation. And these are military drones armed with weapons. And God is going to destroy them through all kinds of natural effects like hail, flooding rain, and fire and brimstone falling from the sky. So Israel's not going to be destroyed. It's going to be these enemies and their weapons destroyed. But I wanted to talk about something that one of my commenters also brought up, and that was, will these lasers be like the fire that comes down from heaven that deceives people? Well, I wanted to answer that, and I thought it was worth talking about on here because I gave him an answer and he thought it was really good and I wanted to address that sign that's supposed to be a wonder performed by this Antichrist person. When I was listening to Rabbi Chaim Richmond speaking, who used to be the director of the Temple Institute working to build the third temple, I was really shocked one day when he made the comment that when they get the third temple built, fire will come down from heaven and consume the offering that's on the altar. And boy, my ears picked up and I thought about Revelation 13 where it says that a sign and wonder will happen where he brings fire from heaven that will deceive people. Now I'm not talking about Rabbi Richmond being that person. I'm just talking about that he said that that's what's going to happen. The fire is going to come down. And why is that interesting? It's because fire coming down from heaven and consuming the offering was a sign of the presence of God. But the Antichrist will perform this sign and I believe cause people to believe that he is God in the future or at least they will believe that he's the Messiah of Israel because he's performing a sign and wonder of causing the fire to come down from heaven now the question was presented you know will it be one of these lasers that comes down out of an armed drone that fools people into thinking this is a fire and the divine presence of God consuming the offering Will there be some trickery going on with that? And I really believe that it has to do with something that's going to happen where fire does come down and consume the offering on the altar for the third temple. So we have Revelation 13, and it says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. If you can see this picture right here, you can see the fire coming down from heaven upon the altar, consuming the offering. So that's what's going to happen in the third temple that's going to make the people believe that this is the divine presence of God, but it's going to be some sort of trickery from the Antichrist, the false messiah, with his false prophet. 
Now, my question is, is the Sanhedrin going to allow the nations to also do sacrifices up there, as I have read that they would allow that? And it's very interesting that when you talk about the Islamic Mahdi, there are signs that will precede him. Could it be that this is the Antichrist who is going to perform this wonder, this sign, and it's going to be a deception, but people will be deceived into believing that God has arrived and his presence is dwelling in their midst. Now we can see this happening in 2 Chronicles 7, 1 through 10. And that fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering. And it says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. And all the children of Israel looked on when the fire came down and the glory of the Lord was upon the house. And they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and prostrated themselves and gave thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Now, I'm sorry, I'm reading that a little choppy, but I'm getting some sort of glare. It's hard for me to read with my cataract, so sometimes when that happens. So right there... Um, you know, in the book of Revelation from the passage I just read, it not only says in the sight of men that he performs this sign, but also it says in the sight of all the people. So all the people would be the people there in the temple that would be witnessing this wonder, this sign that declares the glory of God has come down. Now we see this back in Leviticus 9.22. And Aaron lifted up his hands towards the people and blessed them. And he came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offering. And Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. So there you have the term in the sight of all the people that you have in Revelation 13 again. And there came forth the fire from the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat. And when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. So in other instances, you know, with Elijah, like in 1 Kings 18, starting in verse 30, we see that Elijah repaired and built an altar and told all the people to come near. And then he was preparing with all of the, the trench and put water and seed there and the sin offering, the peace offering, etc. And we get down here to verse 38 of 1 Kings 18, and it says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said unto them, 
Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down, down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. And now we see in 2 Kings chapter 1, verses 12 through 18, Elijah answered and said to them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again he sent a third captain of fifty and his fifty men. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and pleaded with him and said to him, Man of God, Please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire has come down from heaven and burned up the first two captains of fifties with their fifties, but let my life now be precious in your sight. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him, do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down from him to the king. Then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah had spoken, because he had no son. Jehoram became king in his place in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So now look what's going to happen in Revelation 20, verse 7. Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, together with them to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints, that's talking about Israel, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them, and remember, the crescent moon god is known, number one name, the greatest deceiver. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So fire came down from heaven to consume them. So, you know, the disciples actually mentioned that to Jesus. You know, should we make fire come down from heaven? And the Lord wasn't real happy about that statement. So this person who's going to be the false messiah with the false prophet is going to make the fire come down from heaven, I believe, on the third temple altar, causing the people to be deceived that God's divine presence is among them, and they will bow down and worship, and if they don't, they won't be around anymore because the Bible indicates that anybody that doesn't bow down to this beast will be slain. So to sum this up, this is talking about that this, and I believe it's going to be probably the Mahdi is going to do this sign at the third temple because, you know, the Jews want all the nations to come there for this third temple to be a house of prayer for all nations. And they're going to allow these other people to do some of the sacrificing. So when that happens, and they do some sort of trickery, whether it be a laser from a drone or something that somebody can't see way up in the sky, they're going to fool everybody to believe 
that they are the divine presence of God and everyone should have to worship that person. And I believe this is what's going to happen with the fire coming down from heaven, that it's specifically talking about something that's going to happen in the third temple to consume the offering that's offered on the altar. And it's going to be done in front of all the people that are there at the third temple watching. And he's going to deceive at least some of those people. And they're going to believe that what they've just witnessed was a sign and a wonder from God. Now, I'm going to be talking more about some of this subject. But while researching some of this stuff about the Hajj and Islam and all, the Kaaba stone, which is that big black, you know, the building contains the Kaaba stone. And they have this little thing that is kind of, I don't want to say what it is, but they reach in and they kiss this thing. It's something that looks like part of the female anatomy. But they believe that that image is going to be able to speak in the last days, which I find very interesting because in the book of Revelation, it talks about an image of the beast that they can make speak. And I think that's an interesting addition to this. So I guess I'll finish with that. So I wanted to make this video and make it kind of not so long so you're bored or anything, but just to give you some information about the fire coming down from heaven and how that's going to play out. And I just saw a flash, so I don't know what happened. Okay, that was a little strange. But um, this is going to be what's going to happen, I believe, in the third temple that's going to deceive the people into believing God's presence is there. And uh, that's not how God's presence is going to come down at all. So this is just one thing I want to add to the last video about the drones that Iran is selling to Russia for the Gog, Magog war eventually to happen and cover the land like a cloud. And this is about the fire coming down from heaven. But it's what Rabbi Richman said about the fire coming down from heaven and consuming the sacrifice or the offering is what they call it on the altar of the third temple. And that's going to be how it's going to go down. And the deception is definitely going to be there from the greatest deceiver Satan who's trying to enthrone himself there as we speak. And that's the last attempt before Messiah Yeshua, the final king of Judah, reigns forever on God's holy mountain, holy Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, where his name is written forever and where he will dwell and rule and reign. <laughs> so with that information. I'll just uh, see you in the next video, and I hope this was interesting to you. God bless. Talk to you soon.